which ruined Gollum. You see that if you are, mm -hmm. go a long, long way in wickedness, then comes your chance, which you can't therefore demand that it should be made nice and easy at that point. It's going to be probably very sticky, the last chance. And it was too sticky for Gollum, because I spent a lot of thought about it. Because he grew on me. I mean, I almost could see Gollum. Where I've been uh, most criticised by certain people, and where I think I'm the most right, is making point of fact, though I do praise them for seeing it, is that photo actually failed. The thing that people, some people have said about it is extraordinary. You have thought in this age, when we are, we are now faced with, a, with the absolute certainty of pressures which can't be resisted, people do would people have realised more clearly than they ever did before that uh, the motives which would go into such a situation are, are, are so important. It's very rash to put yourself in a position you know to be too powerful for you. That's presumption. If you go in with good motives and then, and then land in a position which you can't face up to, then that's up to the government, isn't it? Yeah, some people have been very angry about it. So the people who the, the, the deprive a man of his citizenship when he came back after being brainwashed and a ratty or give him something away, that's for a sign of mind that is still a bunch of hmm? Hmm? It's true, yes, yes, yes. But you find that your correspondents, in fact, um, c complain a great deal about certain incidents in the story, or have complained. I, I once said, and I think it's roughly true, that if I was to listen to my correspondents, every part of the Lord of the Rings is a failure, or it's, or it's only weakness. On the other hand, there's another list which every part of it is particular strength. <laughs> At what point, I'd like to know, if you can judge at all, did the book take control of you? Long before I wrote The Hobbit and long before I wrote this, they had constructed this well mythology. It was already in existence. It was offered to the publisher before the... I know. Yeah, yeah. And this, the, this mythology and the Eldar and the, the Valar and the Western Paradise and the Elves and the Dwarves and so on, they don't, uh, they don't arise the first time in this book. They'd already been constructed. There's nothing in the, any of the, in the appendices referred to that hasn't already been written. So you had some sort of scheme on which it was possible to work? Well, it meant sagas, yes. Well, it rather seems that they got, it got sucked into it, as the Hobbit did itself. You see, Hobbit was originally not you know, part of it at all, but as soon as he got moving out into the world, it, it got moved, it sucked into it. So your characters and your story really took, took charge? I say took charge, I don't mean that you were completely under their spell or anything of this sort. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't walk about uh, dreaming at all, no. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't, uh, an obsession anyway. Other people have had uh, written large things, they were the same sensation that um, you have sometimes, it may be a purely psychological um, delusion, but you have a sensation that, um, that at this point, A, B, C, D, only A, one of them is right, and you've got to wait till you see. Well, of course, there's no doubt uh, subconscious goes on working on these things. Anyway, it's no good trying to, uh, <laughs> to anticipate because all the things I've tried to write ahead of time just to direct myself all proved to be no good when you got there. A story like that has to be written backwards as well as forwards. This is, I thought, probable, yes. Well, you see, Bottomir, well, he had to be put back. Bottomir came in at a certain point, but of course, he, he had to be put right back into the into book one. Of course, I had maps, because you if you're going to have a complicated story, you must work to a map, otherwise you can never make a map of it afterwards. The moons, I think, finally, uh, the moons and suns have worked out according to what they were in this part of the world in 1942, actually. They must have something where they... I mean, one, I couldn't... I'm not a good enough mathematician or astronomer to work out where they might have been 7,000, 8,000 years ago, but as long as they correspond to some real configuration of what was good enough. Moons are much more tricky to deal with than the suns, of course. But on the whole, I don't think a moon is full or rise in the wrong place. You began in 42, did you, to write it? Oh, no, I began in 30, as soon as the Hobbit was out, in the 30s, you know. And when did you... It was finally finished just before it was published, I in 54? I wrote the draft in about 1949, I should think. I remember blotting... I remember the... the I actually wept at the, at the feel of Cormalin, where, of course, his, the tears come easier, I think, with, at the, at the good day no more, I think. But uh, then, of course, it was a tremendous lot of re revision. I typed the whole of that work out twice, and lots of it many times, on a bed in an attic. But I couldn't afford the, um, of course, the typing. There were some mistakes still. And also, what I amuses me to say, because I suppose I'm in a position which it doesn't matter what people think of me now, <laughs> some frightful mistakes in grammar from a professor of English language literally rather shocking. Yeah. I haven't noticed any. Well, there's one where I use bestrode as the past passive of bestride. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things like that, yeah.
Will you ever correct them in another edition? Or well, you... I have sent you some corrections. They always seem to be new ones cropping up. Yes, there are some. And of course, dwarves are really mistaking grammar, of course. I've tried to cover it up, but, but it's just purely the fact that uh, I have a tendency to, uh, to increase the number of these vestigial approvals, which is a change of constant, like leaf leaves. My tendency is to make more of them than, than, than are now standard. And I find I really thought dwarf dwarves, wolf wolves, why not?